you all also have uh, plea sheets. We do, Judge. All right. Uh, yes, if you could. Yes, that would be great. Thank you, Mr. Banks. Let me take a look at those. Yes, sir. Thank you. So I have the uh, indictment and the plea sheets. Uh, is there anything we need to take up before we begin the colloquy? Uh, and is there any particular um, preference in order? State. Uh, Judge, we prefer, since we have a matter that's a bit outstanding on uh, Defendant Stanley, we'd like to go ahead and take Mr. Bennett's first. All right. Um, We're ready to approach. All right, uh, and you all can stay, uh, remain in place there. Just okay. use the microphone. Okay. All right. All right, so we're ready to begin. Uh, Do you want him to stand, Your Honor? He, everybody can remain seated. Okay. And if the lawyers like to use the podium, that's fine, but it's, it's preferable that you can easily remain seated and accomplish this. And, and, and Your Honor, uh, if I may, And, I, and as I said to you yesterday, Mr. Finling, I appreciate the context, and I think it helps to establish a clear record, and uh, I appreciate the uh, offer and the uh, context you've given. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, we're ready to uh, swear in the defendant at this time? Yes, sir. Let me get a deputy, Deputy Green. Ray Sean Bennett, R A Y S H A W N B E N N E T T. All right. Uh, at this time, Mr. Bennett, uh, Assistant District Attorney Christian has questions for you. Please uh, speak loudly and clearly into the microphone in response to her uh, questions. Ms. Christian, the witness is with you. Thank you, Judge. Are you at this time under the influence of any alcohol, drugs, or any medicine? No, ma'am. Is there any medication that you normally take that you haven't been given today? No, ma'am. How old are you? 32. How far did you go in school? Um, I got my GED. Are you able to read, write, and understand the English language? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you understand that you're charged with the following offenses under indictment 23 SC 188921? Count one, violation of the Racketeering Influence and Corrupt Organization Act, which carries a, a minimum sentence of five years, maximum of 20 years. Count 68, violation of the Street Gang Act, which carries a minimum five years, maximum 20 years. Count 69, violation of the Street Gang Act, that's minimum five years, maximum 20 years. Count 72, violation of the Street Gang Act, minimum five years, maximum 20 years. 
Count 73, violation of the Street Gang Act. Minimum five years, maximum 20 years. Count 76, violation of the Street Gang Act. Minimum five years, maximum 20 years. Count 77, felony murder. That's minimum life, maximum life without the possibility of parole. Count 78, aggravated assault. That's minimum one year, maximum 20 years in custody. Count 78, aggravated assault. Count, that's um, minimum one year, maximum 20 year. Count 80, aggravated assault. Minimum one year, maximum 20 years. Count 81, aggravated assault. The minimum is one year, maximum 20 years. Count 82, aggravated assault. The minimum is one year, maximum 20 years. Count 83, possession of a firearm during commission of a felony. That's five years consecutive. The minimum is life with the possibility of parole followed by five years consecutive. And the maximum you're facing under these charges in the indictment would have been life without the possibility of parole plus 20, 220 years followed by five years consecutive. Do you understand that that's what you were initially charged with in the indictment? Yes. Do you understand that the state has agreed to no pros counts 1, 68, 72, 73, 60, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, and 83? Yes. So, Ms. Christian, the only uh, charge under this uh, recommendation is count 69. Is that correct? Yes, Judge. All right. Excuse me. Have you reviewed this charge with your attorney and been advised of the minimum and maximum for the charge that you're, the one charge that you're pleading to? Yes. And do you understand that you have the right to either plead guilty or not guilty to this charge? And if you plead guilt, not guilty or remain silent, you may receive a jury trial? Yes. Have you had enough time to speak with your attorneys, Mr. Finland and Mr. Banks, about all the facts and circumstances known to you regarding the charges, including any potential defenses? Yes. Do you need more time to speak with your attorney? No. Are you satisfied with their services? Yes. Do you waive a formal reading of the indictment, Mr. Finley? Yes. Um, do you waive any all defects in the indictment? Yes. Do you understand that this is a um, negotiated plea, which means the state will recommend the sentence of under count 69, the recommended sentence is 20, serve 10, balance probated and the special conditions of probation is, are no street gang um, activity, no contact with any known street gang members or associates, no contact with the co-defendants, Reginald Carter, Artez Carter, Justin Ushery, Demonte Thomas, Tadricus Glass, Rayshon, I'm sorry, uh, Rayvon Boyd, Leroy Pitts, Rondavius Hawkin and Derek Adams, no guns or replica guns, no gang affiliation or conduct associated with gangs on social media. You must be gangfully employed and no further violations of the law. Do you understand that those are the conditions? Yes. Uh, and, and Ms. Christian, I just wanted to make sure that the record is clear. You said this is a negotiated uh, plea. This is a negotiated recommendation, but it's officially and formally a blind plea. I just want to yes. make sure the record is clear. Yes, Judge. Do you understand that those are the statutory conditions of your Yes. Session? Do you also understand that you are to have no violations of state or federal laws while serving out any portion of your sentence to include any period of incarceration, to comply with all the rules maintained by county jail where you're housed um, prior to being transported to any facility within the Department of Corrections where you're designated to serve out your sentence. Comply with all the rules maintained by any facility within the Department of Corrections where you are designated to serve out the remaining sentence. Um, you waive a right to appeal any and all terms and conditions of this plea agreement and the sentence imposed as well as any right possessed in connection with OCGA 244-410. And if you violate any of the special conditions that the state is free to revoke the sentence and recommend any penalty allowable under the law, including that you be sentenced to the maximum for the charge in which you plead guilty. Yes. Do you understand that in exchange for this plea, the state has agreed to write a letter to the Board of Pardons and Parole stating that the state would not object to the defendant being released from the Department of Carcerations the first time 
you become eligible or after one third of the sentence has been served, whichever comes first, and you must comply with all lawful authorities of law enforcement while in custody and have no further incidents from the date of this plea in any penal institution. Yes. And the state is recommending you get credit for time served at the time that you voluntarily surrendered yourself into the Fulton County Jail on January 13th, 2021 to present to include any time spent on house arrest as required by law. Yes. You understand that that is the recommendation that the, sent the court, the state is making to the court? Y yes. Do you understand that this, the judge does not have to accept this recommendation and can sentence you to the maximum? Yes. Do you understand that if you're um, currently on probation, your probation may be revoked based on you entering a guilty plea? Yes. Do you understand that if you plead, if you are placed on probation of any kind, you cannot violate any criminal laws of any government unit or special conditions of probation without being subject to revocation of the balance of your sentence? Yes. Do you understand that you're not allowed to possess or use a firearm while on probation? Yes. Do you understand that if you're not a U.S. citizen, a guilty plea conviction will affect your immigration status and will resort in deportation, just like a conviction at trial would? And this is true regardless of any advice your attorneys have been give, has given you. Yes. Do you understand that there may be other adverse or unfavorable consequences as a result of this guilty plea conviction, just as there would be from a conviction for trial? For example, your guilty plea may affect your right to vote, your right to hold public office, your right to serve on a jury, your right to obtain a passport, your right to receive, possess, or transport a firearm, or your ability to obtain employment? Yes. Do you understand that by pleading guilty to a felony, if you receive, possess, or use, or transport a firearm, you'll be guilty of a felony which carries a sentence from one to 15 years in prison? You can repeat that? Yes. Do you understand that if you plead guilty to a felony, and you use, receive, possess, or transport a firearm, you, you, will receive, you will be guilty of a felony which carries a sentence of from one to five years in prison. Yes. Do you understand that you waive any and all defenses by entering a guilty plea? Yes. Do you understand that if you went to trial, you would have the right to a trial by jury, the right to see, hear, and confront witnesses called to testify against you, the right to testify yourself or remain silent and not incriminate yourself? Yes. Do you understand that by pleading guilty, you're giving up the following rights? The right to trial by jury, the right to remain silent and not incriminate yourself, the right to confront witnesses against you, the right to assistance of counsel hired by you, or to for court-appointed counsel if you couldn't afford counsel at the trial of your case, the right to the presumption of innocence, the right to testify on your own behalf and present other evidence, the right to subpoena witnesses and compel the production of evidence, the right to have the charges against you proven beyond a reasonable doubt, the right to appeal if convicted after trial. Yes. Has anyone forced, threatened, or promised you anything to get you to enter this guilty plea? No. Is it your decision to waive these rights and enter a guilty plea because you are in fact guilty? Yes. How do you plead to count 69 in indictment 23 SC 188921. Guilt. Is this guilty plea freely and voluntarily given with full knowledge of the charge against you? Yes. Do you understand that you have a limited right to appeal this guilty plea conviction? Yes. Do you understand that you have four years from today to file a habeas corpus petition challenging the voluntariness of your plea? Yes. Your Honor, had this case gone to trial, the state would have shown that on December 10th, 2020, this defendant, Mr. Bennett, was gifted a 2021 Mercedes-Benz Maybach by his record label. Um, the defendant drove that vehicle and picked up his co-defendants, Rayvon Boyd, Leroy Pitts, and the decedent, James Adams. Um, Boyd, Pitts, and Adams traveled up from Miami, but were visiting the defendant, Mr. Bennett, in Atlanta. The defendant then drove around the city of Atlanta in that vehicle. Um, although Bennett himself did not personally possess a firearm, he was aware that there were firearms in the vehicle to include two assault rifles. At some point, um, 
Defendant Bennett drove to the area of Demick and People Street located in Fulton County while traveling down Demick Street um, after passing several individuals who were standing on the street. This defendant stopped his vehicle. The individuals on the street and the individuals in the inside of his vehicle began shooting at each other. This shooting is captured on surveillance video and the video reflects that after defendant Bennett stopped his vehicle, co-defendants Boyd and the decedent Adams opened the door to the car and began firing assault rifles at Kevin Wright, Nathan Bedford, and others that were on the street at the time. The video shows Nathan Bedford and Kevin Wright and others um, shooting back at the vehicle. During the exchange of gunfire, the decedent James Adams sustained a gunshot wound to his torso that caused his death. After shots were fired, defendant Bennett drove off in the Maybach which then turned onto People Street. The individuals in the vehicle attempted to pull decedent Adam's body back into the vehicle, but were unsuccessful. After, um, as a result, they left his body on People Street and left the scene. After leaving the scene, he drove the vehicle to his father's house to conceal the vehicle following the shooting. The facts and evidence would further establish that defendant Bennett is an associate of the Bloods, a criminal street gang operating here in Atlanta and elsewhere. Defendant Bennett demonstrated his association in part by appearing in rap videos with members of the Bloods while displaying gang signs and wearing gang colors. The basis of the state's reduction judge is essentially this defendant has no criminal history. Um, we have spoken with the family in this particular case and they have have maintained throughout the course since this incident occurred that um, they are on board with the recommendation they w are more than um, amenable to the defendant's request at this point and they have also as um, you are aware from the facts is the defendant's level of culpability in this particular incident he was the driver of the vehicle um, and he didn't have a weapon during the time of this incident and this is out of the 80 something counts in the indictment judge, this is the one incident that this particular defendant is a part of. So given those things, we did take that into consideration and that's the recommendation that we are presenting before the court. All right, um, thank you, Ms. Christian. Uh, Mr. Finling or Mr. Banks, uh, would you like to tell me anything about your client and share anything about the uh, plea? Yes, Your Honor. just didn't talk to Mr. Bennett and just take his words uh, on these things. Uh, we've talked to literally corporate executives in California about him. Um, we've listened to his music. You know, we've been talking to these jurors about listening to, to rap and hip hop and we have spent countless hours watching videos and listening to his music, trying to see the connection it has to the case we've employed the best experts in America on that issue, on the lyrics issue. We've uh, employed the best experts in America on the gang issue. But most importantly, for purposes of our conversation today, and, and not too dissimilar from really what was presented to you by Ms. Christian, I actually appreciate um, her explanation uh, of December 10th. And I would ask the court, December 10th, 2020, to really harken back to some of these those hearings. I think that um, the court will will notice that Ms. Christian's explanation of it is very different than the state's explanation three years ago before she was on the case, and I credit her with the accuracy of, of that description. Um, I will tell the court, as we've shared uh, with counsel, we hired literally the best um, civil engineers in America to analyze what transpired on December 10th, and uh, I think it is fair to say from that, uh, number one, not only is it in possible to with 100% certainty say um, who initiated shooting, 
um, but I think it's fair to say that the argument can be made by professionals um, that these other people um, actually initiate the shooting based on expert testimony. But what's critical about that and what has transpired, and we've been very open with the court and the state has acknowledged, and that is the other folks that were involved, some of the names, I'm not going to besmirch their reputations, as the, as the court has heard, um, now have literally open murder cases going to trial. Um, one of them had been um, charged with criminal attempt to commit murder. These were these other folks. Um, and, and so there was a lot going on in, in that particular area at the time. And these are all the things that contextualize um, the, uh, why this, this plea um, came to fruition uh, at this time. Uh, we, we have really gotten to know uh, our client's family. Uh, the court will note that his family uh, has literally sat in that back row, dedicated to him, uh, paying attention, uh, being courteous to the court, and being respectful to the court, and being here in support of, of Mr. Mr. Bennett. And I think that's what the court can expect with him moving forward. Uh, there have even been people that are involved uh, in the music world that in light fashion have literally been here sitting in the back, being courteous, paying attention to, to these folks, um, to what has transpired here. Your Honor, um, given the fact that he is 32 years old, given the fact um, that, as Ms. Christian accurately said, he comes here really, he comes here with no criminal record, um, I know it's in the discretion of the court for me to ask for a first offender, but let me give you the logistics behind it. I know others have asked, but they've had a, um, they've had a bunch of, uh, of uh, offenses for which they've entered guilty pleas to. Uh, Mr. Bennett comes to your honor um, out of the 13 counts, uh, 12 of them will be not crossed. He is going to enter a plea to, to one of them with the court's permission. Uh, I philosophically, um, had the uh, honor of my first assignment was to be assigned to Judge Daniels Corbin, who wrote the book on, on criminal law, the original book that we all look at. Um, and he used to say, when I was a public defender, um, he used to stare at people and go, it's my honor to give you first defender because everybody deserves a chance to get on the other side. Of course, if you commit any faux pas during that period of time, you will pay the price dearly. Um, First offender is the proverbial sword of Damocles, um, and it will hang over uh, Mr. Bennett's head for a long time. Um, what's interesting about this offense, uh, this plea, excuse me, is that there really will take two decades for first offender to ultimately inure to the benefit um, of Mr. Bennett. Of Mr. Bennett, um, and so I think that it kind of serves. Uh, kind of a double purpose. One, it incentivizes him. Uh, but two, it's just not that sword of, of Damocles that's there for a three-year theft by receiving probation, um, but something that he will have to live with because his probation, as the court well is well aware, his probation literally does not kick in um, for approximately seven years. Um, and so then he's got to go seven years and then get on the other part of that probation for first offender to kick in. And I want the court to know um, that uh, we, his, his lawyers, have made sure he understands um, that that first offender can be uh, problematic. And we went over the negative and positive consequences of that. Now, as with any other profession, a first offender gives you the chance uh, professionally, and it, it is important in, in his line of work. Um, hopefully one day um, he'll be freer to, to travel, um, to try to get back to where he, he, um, he not only was, um, but really a whole nother level. Um, and, and first offender would give him the ability to travel in places, quite frankly, um, but for getting first offender, he may never get the chance to, to travel. As the court knows, um, with a felony conviction, international travel becomes extremely difficult. Um, and maybe it will take 10 years for him to go to those places, um, but that would, be, uh, an, 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 that would be very, very important for him moving forward to be able to go to, to visit venues he would not ne necessarily be able to travel to, uh, to contractually have relationships 
um, with morality clauses that you might not able to otherwise be able to contract to. Um, there's just a, a plethora of reasons it would be it would be important. Um, I also, Your Honor, um, want to say that um, I think that um, this process uh, has has really served a purpose. This case is is unique. Uh, it's a RICO case where there were his charges were 13 in number, um, but we we I know ultimately had 11. Uh, people in the case, and 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 cases like this are not the normal single defendant, single count case. Um, unfortunately, with the complexity of a case that can last as long as three three months, um, it takes a while for all parties, and I include our colleagues from the state, to get to the point uh, where a resolution makes sense. And and so this is really not a, a, a statement on Mr. Bennett that we're we're taking this, you know, in this third week of jury selection, but really the process. Um, and as I said in my opening remarks, um, this court has encouraged, um, I know, you know, you have your phrase of knee to knee, but you have encouraged us to remain in conversation while never saying specifically about this issue, it's about, been about all the other issues in the case, and um, all parties have uh, taken that seriously. I think as I said to you yesterday, if, if the parties look red-eyed, it's because other than the legal work we've been doing, we've been literally talking with one another to all hours, in person, on the phone, um, trying to bring a resolution. Um, with all that being said, um, I think that Mr. Bennett truly appreciates where he is right now and um, would very much, on behalf, his behalf, we'd ask that the, the, the court accept the, the plea as negotiated and we're available for any questions from the court. All right, thank you, Mr. Finling. Uh, Mr. Banks, are you, do you wish to go on the record as well? Judge, I would just simply say that these are very difficult cases. Having been the former director of the gang unit um, in this office, um, 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 there, there are always challenges when you try these type of cases with these multi-defendant cases involving gang charges. Uh, Mr. Finling has really adequately describe what has occurred uh, between the negotiations of the parties. Um, 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 this was going to be a hard fall back. And the state knows that, we knew that, um, and as a result of that, Judge, I do believe that um, we were able to have those kneecap to kneecap meetings um, and, and come to this resolution. I do think it's appropriate. Um, this is not a slap on the wrist by no means. Um, because of the hard-fought battle that was going to be fought. Um, having said that, he's here, he's ready to accept responsibility, and I would submit, Judge, that you should um, accept the party's negotiated recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Banks. What What's the state's position on the uh, first offender request? Um, thank you, Judge. We, as the um, court knows, we've had several negotiations. This has been a point um, of discussion, and um, we were aware that this would be a request, and not just on my behalf, but after speaking even with the DA regarding this particular issue, Your Honor, the state objects to first offender. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Christian. All right. Uh, Mr. Bennett, based on the presentation of Ms. Christian, the assistant district attorney, I find that there's an adequate factual basis for the charges against you. More importantly, based on your responses to her questions, I find you're entering your plea in this case knowingly, intelligently, and voluntarily. At this time, before sentence is imposed, you're free to make a statement, but only if you wish to do so. Would you like to make a statement at this time? Mm, yes. All right. Um, first off, um, I want to say my heart goes out to my friend James Adam and his family. Um, also, I want to apologize to my family and my friends for putting them through this stressful process. And I would also like to apologize to the court. And that's it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Uh, let me just confirm with the state that the only pending charge in this recommendation is count 69. Yes, Judge. And what is that charge? The violation of the Street Gang Act. All right. For count 69, Mr. Bennett, violation of, of the Street Gang Act, your sentence is 20 years to serve 10 years with the balance on probation. 
All other counts will be null prost. There are several conditions to this plea agreement. There are special conditions and conditions on the state. The special conditions are that you are to engage in no criminal street gang activity. You're to have no contact with criminal street gang members or associates. You're to have no contact with your co-defendants, Derek Adams, Rondavius Hawkins, Rayvon Boyd, Leroy Pitts, Artez Carter, Malik Stanley, Reginald Carter, DeMonte Thomas, Tadrikas Glass, Justin Ushery, and Victor Meadows. You're to have no guns or replicas of guns. You're to participate in no gang affiliation and or conduct associated with gangs on social media. You must be gainfully employed. And for purposes of the uh, definition of employment, since you are an entertainer, uh, self-employment would come under the context of employment. You're to have no violation of any state or federal law while serving on any portion of this sentence, including any period of incarceration. You are to comply with all rules maintained by the county jail where you are to be housed prior to being transported to a facility within the Department of Corrections where you will be designated to serve out this sentence. You are to comply with all rules maintained within any facility of the Department of Corrections where you will be designated to serve out this sentence. You'd wait, you will waive your right to appeal any and all terms and conditions of this plea agreement and the sentence imposed, as well as any right that you possess in connection with OCGA Section 24-4-410. I'd like to ask uh, both Mr. Findling and Mr. Banks if that if this term is agreed to by counsel as well. It is, Judge. Yeah. All right. If you violate any term or condition of this agreement, including the special conditions, the state will be free to revoke this sentence and recommend any penalty allowed under the law, including but not limited to the maximum sentence provided by law. As a condition of this sentence, the state has also agreed, and I believe this is the first time I've ever seen this, the state has agreed to write a letter to the Board of Pardons and Parole stating that the state will not object to you being released from the Department of Corrections the first time that you become eligible for parole or after serving one third of your prison sentence, whichever comes first, if you comply with the following conditions. You to comply with the lawful authority of any and all law enforcement. You to have no further incidents from the date of this plea in any penal institution. You are to receive credit, uh, and I don't do the credit from time served, but what I will acknowledge is you have been incarcerated since January 13th of 2021 to the present. Is that correct, Ms. Christian? Yes, Judge. And Mr. Finley and Mr. Banks, do you agree with, with that date, with those dates? Yes, yes sir. All right. Have I adequately detailed the uh, recommendation, Ms. Christian? Yes, Judge. Uh, Mr. Finley. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I just want to ask just one fact on the first offender. I know there was an issue with a co-defendant, but the court would note that co-defendant had a plea to a voluntary manslaughter charge, which puts the court in an uncomfortable position for a request on first offender on voluntary manslaughter. That's a difficult ask. We're not similarly situated. All right. And, and the court has considered the first offender request, and the court is denying the request at this time. All right, anything else? Have I adequately detailed the recommendation, Mr. Banks? If I may, Judge, um, as a part of the negotiated recommendation, the state has agreed to no pros indictment number 22 SC 180737, as well as declined to prosecute case number 23 CP 216278. Is that correct, Ms. Christian? Yes, Judge. I was going to present that at the end of this. All right. Uh, so is there anything else before I bring uh, – probation on to get further instructions from the state, Ms. Christian? Nothing else remaining on this. Any, all right. Anything else, Mr. Finling or no, Mr. Your Banks? No, Your Honor. It's just, it's just been a, yeah, no. All right. Uh, Officer Smith, you go ahead and unmute your microphone, please. Yes, Your Honor. Um, before Mr. Um, Bennett is, when he is placed on parole or when he is released on parole, he'll be given reporting instructions at that time. If he resides in another state, they will process the transfer of the case to the other state. 
that he will be given full and complete reporting instructions prior to his release from the uh, Department of Corrections. All right. Uh, thank you, Officer Smith. All right. Uh, I'd like to uh, just uh, echo Mr. Finling's earlier comments uh, about the uh, professionalism exhibited by uh, the attorneys for the state and the defense in this case and uh, this process as well. Uh, although it's not been easy, uh, all attorneys have uh, exhibited the highest levels of professionalism. It's greatly appreciated by the court. Thank you. All right. That completes the uh, sentencing for Mr. Bennett. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Before we release Mr. Bennett, the state does move to null process. I'd like to motion the court to null process at this point. Go ahead, um, uh, Ms. Christian. The state moves to null process indictment 22SC180737. And for the record, the state. Um, as it relates to this particular defendant, the state did agree to not move forward on 23CP216278. May I present that null process to the court, Judge? Uh, yes, thank you. All right, uh, I'm going to step off for a moment. I believe we have another uh, non-negotiated plea, but this completes the uh, process for Mr. Bennett. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.